Good to everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And that is a choice. Every day we wake up, we choose whether we're going to rejoice and be glad in this day. And this is a day the Lord has made. And no matter what is going on, we can always rejoice for we know that God is always in control. Good day, good day, good day. My name is Pastor Rose coming from Mount Calvary Baptist Church um, in Mullica Hill, New Jersey. Uh, we're just so excited that you decided to join us today. And we are going to get right into this word for we know there's a good word for all of us today. And it's coming from the book of Philippians. Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 8. And it reads as follows. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. My topic today is what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Our mind is a very powerful thing. Our mind includes our thoughts, imagination, memory, will, and sensation. It also includes our perception, our pain, experience, belief, desire, intention, and emotions. You ever see someone do something and you ask them, what in the world were you thinking? As a matter of fact, we may even ask ourselves after we did something and said, oh my gosh, what in the world was I thinking? And we say that because we know that action first starts with the thought in the mind. You see, the mind is the reason why we do what we do, why we say what we say, go where we go, feel what we feel, and why we believe what we believe. Our mind directs, our mind controls, our mind is a very powerful thing. Look at this. Our mind has the ability to respond to something in less than a quarter of a millisecond. Think about that. That is one thousandth of a second. Our minds also have the ability to capture things that we do not consciously realize, right? That term subliminal which is perceived by or affecting someone's mind without them being aware of it. Our mind is a powerful thing. And this is why the scripture states the following in Proverbs 4 and 23. It says, carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. Now, there's other translation that says hearts, but this translation says, carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. We have guard our mind against the enemy, Satan, who wants to pollute our minds. Now, other translations say, uh, state to guard it with diligence, which means that we have to be intentional. We have to uh, be watchful and be sure that our minds do not get polluted. Let's look at the story and we're going to get back to it. Here, we've been in a book of Philippians for the past four weeks. Uh, and, and again, this is Paul writing this epistle, this letter to the church at uh, uh, Philippi uh, while he was in jail in Rome. And he encouraged the people constantly uh, to rejoice. As a matter of fact, in, in chapter four, he said, uh, rejoice in this particular chapter, in the chapter we're in now, he says, rejoice always again, I say, rejoice. Now, Paul could always rejoice because Paul knew who he was who he belonged to, and where he was ultimately going to go, which is to be with the Lord. So he encouraged the people to rejoice for the same factors that he was able to rejoice. Now listen, Paul understood the troubles that arise while on this earth as he experienced many, which is why he was encouraging the people. So he states in, in this particular verse uh, of Philippians 4 and 8, he says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's any worthy of praise, think about these things. Paul was given him more ways of how to keep straining towards the mark and the reason he could still rejoice and stay on a battlefield in his current midst. So look, Paul uses the word finally. You know, two weeks ago, we talked about that in chapter three when Paul used the word finally, and he really was nowhere near done. It's kind of what we talk about how preachers do that uh, in the middle of the sermon. They're like, finally, or I'm almost done, and they're really not <laughs> almost done. But here, he used the word finally because Paul is almost done now. So he encourages the people to meditate, to keep their thoughts and their mind on certain things. Paul understood the power of the mind and why it was important to keep control of it. Through all that Paul went through, and he went through a whole lot, Paul was able to keep control of his mind, which was the reason he could still rejoice. Now, I am sure 
that we can think of some people who went through some rough things and it appeared that they lost their mind because we saw them and do we saw them do things and say things that were out of their mind but that wasn't Paul Paul could still rejoice in the midst of his hard times and strain forward because he kept control of his mind. And that is because he meditated on these certain things that he stated. Now, again, the mind is a powerful thing. What we think directly affects our daily actions and life. Our state of mind will determine if we are going to have a good day or a bad day. If we are going to be up or if we're going to be down, right? And that starts in the mind. Remember, our mind controls our emotions. It controls our perceptions. It controls how we look at things and how we react to them. Do you know that we could drive ourselves crazy about what we think about, right? And we have, right? As a matter of fact, many of us have lost sleep because our minds were racing, right? But many times we find out that what we think about and harbor on is really not that serious as we make it out to be in our mind. But when we allow ourselves to be consumed with thinking about the wrong things and to be consumed with all that worry and anxiety, how can we be effectively doing what God has called us to do? We can't, right? And, and, and the enemy, Satan, has us right where he wants us to be. There's a prophet in the Bible by the name of Elijah, and I want to keep this story uh, uh, short because it's a really long story. But one day, Elijah uh, ran into Ahab, uh, and he said, Ahab, I want you to grab all the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Asherah, and we're going to come, and we're going to see who really the true God is. And so uh, uh, Ahab gathered them all together, and there was two bulls. And uh, Elijah told him, and said, listen, you call on your God, and I want them, you know, you put them on an altar, and I want to see your God consume uh, you know, the uh, and burn up the sacrifice, and I'll do the same. And so the prophets did that. They had everything set up, and they started to call on Baal and call on Baal. And they did it for hours and hours and hours, and, you know, to the point where Elijah was making fun of them. So then Elijah said, no, let me do it now. And so Elijah, you know, had, had the sacrifice all there and put water on it, did a few other things, and he called on God. And God instantly consumed everything that was around. And Elijah said, see, I serve a true God. And so Elijah took all the prophets down and he had them all killed. And so word got back to Ahab's wife, who was Jezebel. And Jezebel sent word to Elijah that she was after him. Elijah then, I tell you what, he blew it up in his mind because Elijah ran, Elijah got depressed, Elijah had anxiety, Elijah was worried. He could not keep this off, of thing, off his mind. He told God, why don't he just die and all this stuff because Elijah was so consumed about what Jezebel said that he forgot about what God just did, right? God just showed about who he was. And that's what happens when we allow our mind to get consumed about things of this world. We don't leave no room about remembering what God has done for us, the power of God, and we allow it to consume us. And that's exactly what the enemy wants us to think about, right? He wants us to think about those things that cause anxiety and worry. He wants us to think about anything other than God, because if we're not thinking about God, we're not praying, we're not communicating, but we're by ourselves and we are vulnerable, right? So that's why Paul said, listen, I want you to think on these things, right? Luke 21 34 says, do not spend all of your time thinking about eating or drinking or worrying about life. If you do, the final day will suddenly catch you. We can't do that. We can't allow all those things to weigh us down, right? So look here, what we think about, what is on our mind, where our thoughts go, how we react has much to do with what we input into our minds. What we input into our minds determines what comes out in our words and what comes out in our actions. Again, that's why Proverbs 4 and 23 says carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. What we input into our minds comes from all of our senses. It does. So it is what we allow our eyes to see what we allow our ears to hear, what we allow our hands to touch or to be touched, what we allow our tongues to taste and our nose to smell. All of this is how we input into our minds. Now, the danger part of, danger part of that is that Satan uses temptation to sin through our senses, 
right? We sin because of what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch, what we smell. And if we do not watch what we're inputting into our minds, then our minds will be thinking of those things that lead to sin. Right? So that's why we have to reflect on our lives about what books are we reading? What websites do we, are we going to? What are we following on social media? What music do we listen to? What podcasts do we listen to? What conversations are we having and with whom? What are we touching or what are we allowing to touch us physically and mentally? Right? All that stuff gets inputted into our minds. Let me tell you two stories about uh, David and Joseph and let me compare it too. Uh, one day, we, we know the sin of David, but one day he was supposed to be out to war, and he wasn't, and he decided to go on the rooftop, right? And so he saw a woman bathing, right? He saw, right? So David, and he gazed. David allowed that to be inputted into his mind, right? And, I'm sh and a gaze means that you're, you're now allowing the input. I'm sure he was thinking about it because eventually he said, go get that woman and bring her over here. That married woman and bring her over here. The woman that didn't belong to him, bring her over here. And David ended up laying with her. And that was a sin that he should not have done. But however, he let that get inputted into his mind, which then created action, right? Let's look at Joseph. Joseph uh, w uh, was at Potiphar, right? Potiphar's house. He was sold to Potiphar. He was a uh, leader over Potiphar's land and, and, and things as such. And so Potiphar's wife really liked Joseph. And so one day she, she tried to seduce Joseph and grab Joseph. And Joseph said, no, I'm out of here. Joseph ran. He, matter of fact, took his jacket off, said, you can have this. And he got out of there. Why? Joseph did not allow, to, would not allow himself to see anything or hear anything or smell anything. He got out of there. And, 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 and eventually, you know, she cried. Right? However, though, he did not allow that stuff to be inputted into his mind. We cannot linger around stuff because stuff gets inputted into our mind, whether we do it intentionally or not. What we input will determine what comes out, right? If I go to the bank and I deposit $5, I'm not able to take $10 out, only deposit $5. If I deposit bad things in my mind, good things are not going to come out because I deposit bad things. You know, earlier I stated, that our minds have the ability to respond in less than a quarter of a millisecond, which is one thousandth of a second. What we automatically say or do in a quick reaction is not because it was just a quick reaction. It came from what we input it, right? Sometimes we like to say, oh, I just reacted. Yes, you did. But your response in the reaction came from what was inputted because you can only export what has been inputted in. So this is why Paul states that you need to be thinking on these things right here. And so he starts off, he says, think on whatever is true. Right? Because whatever is not true is a lie, right? And we know the devil is a liar. Jesus stated in John 8 and 44 when speaking to the Pharisees who did not, want, who did not believe in him. In John 8 and 44, Jesus said, when he lies, he speaks out of his own character. He says, for he is a liar and the father of lies, talking about uh, the enemy. See, truth is the word of God. If I am not thinking on that, then I am thinking on lies, and then I start to believe them when I'm thinking on them. So now, you know, the enemy likes to tell us lies about ourselves, about how we're not capable, about how we're not good enough, how we're not this or that. He tells us lies about our life, or that we're a failure and we don't have what somebody else has, right? And then we start to believe those things, right? The enemy wants us to think on those things, but we can't, right? Then Paul says, think on those things that are honorable, which are noble, just, which is right, right? Then he says, pure, which is clean or wholesome. Not the dirty things of this world, not the perverted things of this world, because those things will lead to impure thoughts and desires. Then Paul says, think on those things that are lovely, right? Thinking on those things that aim towards love and grace. Thinking on those things that bring smiles. He says, think on those things that are commendable, which are admirable. Things that are good to hear, not gossip or bad news, but things that build up, not things that tear down. He says, think on those things that are excellent which is uh, uh, moral goodness and virtue. He says, Paul says, think on anything worthy of praise, worthy of great recognition. Think about those things. Set your mind on those things. Meditate on those things. When we put our mind, in, in whatever, when we put those things into our mind, they are the things that come forth from us. 
You know, in a letter to Colossians, Paul stated this. He said in Colossians 3 and 2, he says, Set your mind on the things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. The things that are above and the things that Paul described in this verse ultimately describes Christ. Paul was really saying, keep your mind on Christ, right? And we know that because he is the one who's above. He is the truth. He is honorable. Jesus is just. He's pure. He's lovely. He's commendable. He's excellent. And how many of us know that he is worthy of all of our praise? To guard our minds, we must meditate on Jesus. Paul was able to rejoice no matter what, get through no matter what, because his mind was on Jesus. And our minds must be on Jesus too. My question to you is, what are you thinking about? God bless you. Amen. We hope that you are blessed by the word of God. And right now, we want to offer the opportunity for someone to give their life to Christ. God recognized that we needed a savior. So he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for our sins so that we can have eternal life and that our sins can be covered by the blood. The only way to get to God, the only way to get to heaven is through his son Jesus. Because Jesus stated that no man come through the Father but through me. And so if we believe and we accept his son Jesus, we will be able to see God, we'll be able to get to heaven. And if you want to be saved, all you have to do is repeat after me and you can be saved. Why don't you do so right now and close your eyes with me and say, Father, I admit that I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I believe that Jesus died on a cross for my sins and I confess him as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have done that, we welcome you to the kingdom of God. And as always, we just ask that you get to a church where you can learn more about his word. Also, if you would like to see us live, please uh, come to us on Sunday online at www.mcbcmh.org. Click on the live stream every Sunday at 11 a.m. and you'll be able to catch us live. And we hope that you join us. Also, if you would like to give a donation or a tithe, please feel free to do so as well. That's www.mcbcmh.org. Click on the donate tab and the directions will be there for you. God bless you and we hope that you have a wonderful day.